in this uh, garbage pan which I can use to store emergency water in is uh, simulated river water it's basically the third rinse and a load of wash I was looking at it, it looks almost like river water so we're going to do some water purification tricks here today common bottle of Clorox make sure you get the unscented variety you buy the scented variety and try to use it for purification process you're going to have a problem since this is pretty nasty looking I'm going to put about half a cup in there so here's another thing you can use this is 35 percent hydrogen peroxide food grade you buy it at a health food store treat this stuff like battery acid you get it in your eyes it'll blind you you get it on your skin it'll turn that top layer of skin white and kill it it's it's nothing to play around with if you get too much Clorox in the water what you can do is take the top off of the container let the chlorine bleed out and if you want to hurry that process you can set the whole thing in the sunlight that'll uh, take the chlorine out of it and the chlorine taste and smell real fast if you get too much hydrogen peroxide in there <laughs> you'll be foaming at the mouth like a mad dog <laughs> and, and you'll feel it bubbling in your mouth but I don't think 12 drops per gallon you would notice the difference. That's just to uh, get it distributed better. You can use a stick. My hands are pretty clean. I cooked breakfast this morning. Oh, paper towels. Never leave home without it. That's as good as American Express carton <laughs> in the kitchen. After two years in a non-food grade plastic container which this is nothing but a rubber made heavy duty garbage pail I would not drink that water it's not food grade and with the chlorine and that non food grade plastic God knows what you're gonna get chemical wise but I would wash my dishes in it and rinse my dishes and then dry the dishes off now for the um, drinking water and cooking water we use food grade jerry cans. Two of these will last me about a week down here of cooking and uh, drinking and I drink two gallons of tea a day usually. So That's the story on uh, water purification. Have a nice day. One dog, leash up. Go. Go walk. Ho! Oh, come sit. Leash up. Sit. Sit. I said sit. No. Both. Puppy. Yeah, you. This one don't like the leash. She'll stay just out of arms reaching me. See? See how quick she is? She's fat, but get up there little girl. What I want to do is get all three of them trained for a leash and hook them to my bicycle and make them pull me into town to the grocery store <laughs> so I don't have to pedal. Come on, you're trying to slip that leash. I know what you're trying to do. You fools me, I'll tighten that collar down tight enough that you're not going to like it. This is their favorite time of the day. This is their treat. This is like taking the family to the movie and buying them popcorn. Go! Get the deer. Get the rabbit. Get them squirrels. Get them coyotes. Get the birds. Out there someplace. Get them. Well, I started this list about four or five months ago, and I sat down in front of the computer, and I come up with five or six categories, named that part one, survival. Part two is why you need part one. 
<laughs> and it gets into all the government shenanigans and the New World Order and all the little games the bankers are playing and Federal Reserve, IRS, and hopefully you can go through this list. I don't care if you're in a high-rise apartment building in New York City. There's things that you can pick out in this list that applies to your particular situation. What I would use off that survival list wouldn't be what a person in New York City would use. Some of the basics are common, no matter where you're at. If you're in a house, you could take uh, one inch, four by eight sheets of styrofoam, pick out one room in the house, I would call it the safe room, line the ceilings and the walls with that styrofoam. Where the windows are, you cut out plugs, basically, and stick them in there. That'll cut down on your, your energy cost a lot. And if you're living in a 40-story high-rise and they shut the water off, <laughs> you're going to have a long carry. But you could fill up the bathtub, you know, and flush the john with it, and chlorine will clear that water up, and it's uh, you're good to go. Like the water I, at my place down there, I use a garden hose to wash the dishes with and take my bucket baths with. I've got two five-gallon food-grade jerry cans I carry. I fill them up at the spigot at the well, and I carry them in and 10 gallons at a time, five in each uh, thing. I carry two of them because it keeps me balanced. Living on Social Security, don't have any money, and I want to do something for America. I'm going to lose it. <laughs> Try to uh, save the Republic because after my generation is gone, all the skills that I learned you know, from gardening and uh, living on a farm and they'll all be lost. And my kids wouldn't be able to find their backside with both hands out here in the woods camping. And I can, I can distribute this updated survival list like once a month. I can send it to 350 people in a matter of an hour. It doesn't cost me anything. I've only had a couple of bad comments on it because the part two, the political part. I like listening to Robbie Noel, and I like his parallels. He draws between what happened in South Africa, Rhodesia, and what's going on in the United States right now. And I also like listening to a 70-year-old German person that lived and uh, was young in the 20s and 30s in Nazi Germany and the parallels of what's going on in America today right now is so similar to what went on in Rhodesia not too many years ago when the blacks took over and shot all the white farmers down there and uh, what the Nazis did over in, in Germany. So, you know, they say you're supposed to learn by history. I don't think we do. I think we keep making the same damn mistake over and over again. It's my opinion. Hello, girl. My baby? Are you my baby? Love my brother? Where's my puppy? Rusty pup! Come on, pup! We're going now! All right, Gary in Tennessee? Gary, you're on with John Clark. Well, thank you very much.